we up to? Yeah. Oh, you are the nicest. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I have the sixth and final installment of Spooky Sewing, and I am exhausted. It has been so much sewing, but it has been really fun. And I saved the project I'm most excited about for, for last. So let's talk about it. So this here is the fabric. It's a really beautiful iridescent card with little beetles on it, which is the spooky factor. If this fabric looks familiar, it's because the closet historian used it in one of her videos earlier this year. And I stocked it till it came back in stock at Mood. And then I bought this and I also bought the other color, but this is the one I wanna use, which is not the one she used, but when I saw this iridescent, like purple color, I was like, I have to use this as Halloween and I have to make a really gorgeous 1940s cocktail dress. So that's what in the, is in the cards today. So let's show you the pattern. This is the pattern. It is Simplicity 2864. It is this really pretty evening dress. I'm going to be doing the shorter one. I don't wear like long formal gowns very often. So that's what I'm going with. And the description on this guy, teenage one piece day dress in daytime and evening lengths. The dart fitted bodice has a low V-shaped neckline in the front and the back. Gather soft in the center back of the four gourd skirt. Style one, the evening version is sleeveless and features a ribbon bow with streamers in the back and then style two has short sleeves and a single collar a self or purchase belt will may be worn so i'm actually combining a mix so i'm basically going to do the evening bodice with the shortened length oh i just inhaled my hair oh that was terrible so that is the plan for this project i do want to know as this being my last one of the six weeks of spooky if you did enjoy it i would really appreciate it if you wanted to go ahead and buy me a coffee on a very on ko-fi i'll put the link wherever it is up here i've just put a ton of time and work like this has taken a lot of effort i actually had to take a week off of my full-time day job to be able to accomplish this i don't like always feel the most comfortable asking for like people to buy me a coffee and of course only do so if you're financially able but i do put in so much time and effort into this channel and so i always appreciate it this is just always like a little awkward and not my fave spooky however is coming in Whoa! spooky would also love it if you bought me a coffee oh goodness because that means she gets cat food, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, that's my uh, little awkward spiel. And so with that, let's go ahead and hop into cutting out this fabric. So I cut these out pretty much like normal. I did try to remember to cut most of them with French seams. I failed on one, but all the rest, I did remember to cut French seamed. This just means I'm adding like a half inch to the sides. As usual, I focused on the two big pieces and then worked my way through all of the smaller pieces. I will say at this point, I think pattern weights are my favorite method. I think it helps that I also have better shears than I used to, but so far I just really really think the pattern weight method works, especially with slick fabrics like this. Cutting fabric has definitely become less of a pain than it was back when I used the pin method, and this is also definitely better for my patterns. I was kind of stubborn to it because I didn't have a cutting table, but now that I've figured out a system moving my cutting mat around, I'm pretty happy with it. Hello, it is afternoon, it is almost one o'clock, and I'm gonna get started sewing for today. So today I have just kind of planned to get as far as I can. Bare minimum, wanna get the full bodice done. I would really love to get the whole project done today, but I'm not going to say I will. I'm at least going to get the bodice done. So we're gonna start there. I don't think I have too much to say here, so we'll just go ahead and hop straight into the sewing. Like most patterns, this one starts with the darts. So I am here just marking them quickly. I'm using this clover tool. That's kind of like a pinwheel chalk thing in one. It works really, really well on slick fabrics. I do have it linked down below in my sewing list favorites. But yeah, this, this definitely just works really well for slick fabrics where something like chalk kind of like drags it. I don't know how to explain it, but this definitely works the best. And then once, of course, I have these all drawn on, I am then going to just pin the darts like normal, matching points and all that jazz. I do think it's kind of fun seeing the iridescence of the fabric on my ironing board. And then here I am just sewing up the shoulder and the side seams. The shoulder seams I forgot to cut for French seams, but I did remember to cut the side seams, so it all worked out. 
So for the finishing of the armhole, they have you make a bias binding. And so I did this using the fabric that I'm sewing with. And then I am just sewing that in. And then once I have it sewn, I am just clipping around to hopefully get it nice and flat before then under stitching to hopefully make sure that this lays really, really nice in the armholes. And then with these parts of the bodice done, it's time to put my focus on the ruffles. This is actually a fairly simple pattern. For the ruffles though, it was a little bit tricky to pin because this fabric is so slippery. I debated having one of the ruffles be the opposite side of the fabric that leaned more purple, but I ultimately decided to keep all of them the same color just because I kind of want this to be a very like chic dress. And I was concerned if I did the flipping, it might start to look a little bit more like clown-like. So that is, I guess, why I ultimately made the decision I did. And then here I am just following the markings for this color and stitching that 5 eighths away. Once I finished that, it was time to turn it inside out. I knew this would kind of be a challenge, so I have already clipped all of my seams and I am now just kind of messing with it until I can get it as round as it should be before then finally ironing it. This is just always kind of tricky, but if you take the time and do it right, it's definitely worth it and shows on the final garment. And then the next step for these ruffles, I have gone ahead and put in the basting stitching off camera that I'm going to use to gather some of the ruffles. Here I am just again following the markings and pinning. I'm cleaning up some edges here. These are not fabric scissors, which was not the move. I'm just trying to make sure I can get these pinned in to be as like correct as possible and not do anything strange. Because a lot of times when you're trying to hit that perfect center mark, it's really easy to mess it up. So I'm really taking my time because the center point is the focal point and you will see if I make a mistake. Here I have basted that first ruffle down, so I'm now pinning the second top ruffle to it. Again, being really, really careful around the center and just following all of the different directions. Again, here I have the basting in place so I can gather it when I need to. I do, again, just love looking at this fabric on the ironing table. It's so pretty how it shifts and I just absolutely love it. But yeah, like I said, this was a much more straightforward dress than I thought it would be. Here I'm going ahead and I'm basting that second ruffle on. I'm basting both of these because there's a chance the stitches show, and because of this type of fabric, I need to be able to easily take any stitches that are showing out because they will be really apparent on the final dress. And now it is time to prepare the facings. First, I am just stitching them together at the shoulder seams like you're supposed to. And then after I have ironed those, I am going to turn the hems up a quarter inch to make sure it will be nice and clean for when I get to actually attach them. And then pinning on the facing is pretty easy. Again, I am putting some focus towards the center to make sure when I sew over everything, it's very clear what goes in the center and where exactly it should be hitting. Otherwise, this was a really, really straightforward pin job, especially compared to the ruffles that I did earlier. So here after I've sewn in the facing, I am just going ahead and I am clipping all of my corners, just generally getting rid of some of the bulk there since we do have six layers of fabric here. And then after I do all that, I am just going ahead and under stitching in the spots that I can. And then here I am taking the time to press everything and make it really, really nice for the iron. This is just really important because this is going to be the easiest this is ever to press because it doesn't have the big skirt attached. And of course I will eventually be tacking down these facings. So it's good to have them in their best form. And then here I am stitching down both the facing and the side bias binding along the armholes. And of course I get a kitty cat to join me in my lap. She always enjoys sitting with me while I hand sew, which I do appreciate, even though the interruption in the middle is always a little rocky. And then at this point, I am also cleaning up the basting stitch I put in for the gathering up at the top of the ruffles. And then here I am seaming the skirt panels together. 
these are pretty much just rectangles with a slight curve at the bottom, so there's nothing too complicated about it. And while the front is smooth, there is basting that I need to do in the back because it is going to be kind of gathered in the back, kind of bustle-like. I'm pretty excited about it actually because this is one of my favorite forms. Like I always feel like it looks really good on me. That is what we're doing here is we're just putting in those basting lines so I can gather it. And then here I am gathering everything and fitting it into the bodice. This was pretty easy and straightforward. Nothing super big to note here. And then once I get everything pinned down, I'm just sewing it like I would usually. And then once I am happy with how everything's sitting, I'm again pulling out all of the gathering threads that I used to make these gathers before I do the final, I was gonna say seam sealing, but it's not sealing, it's binding, um, but just getting all of the loose threads out of the way so I don't have to worry about them when I come seam bind this. And I have chosen the seam binding in my collection that is the closest color to this fabric, which is this turquoise peacock color. So I am just stitching it over on one side and then I will fold it over the top and stitch it down the other and we will then have nice clean finished seams along the waistline. And I found a zipper that matches this beautifully and I'm just popping that in. I've again put in the facing tape that I used to put in the zipper to make things a little bit easier. And then after that, I am just kind of stitching it in. I have found that this is my best method for zippers. Everybody kind of has their own. Mine is to like not pin. I find that my zippers go a lot better and aren't as bubbly if I don't pin them. But I know other people need to like pin or baste or whatever them in. I just really think what works for you is what you should do because zippers are a nightmare. But with that, we are finished for today and I'm going to try it on off camera. The dress is pretty much done, so I'm pretty excited. Good morning, so we are next day. I thought I was all done with this dress and then I went to try it on and it is one inch too small. I forgot that I was working with 1940s and I needed to be better about trying on the bodice before I move on. So I didn't and now I'm paying for it. So this is the dress, it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore it and I finished it beautifully. So now the challenge today is going to be figuring out how to get that extra seam allowance back. My plan is to take it from the sides. It would honestly probably be easiest to take it from the zipper, but I did a really good job on the zipper and I don't really wanna have to redo it. And the sides will give me like a more proportionate whatever, as opposed to taking it back all from the back. I'm gonna do three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna give myself back three eighths from both sides, but I haven't really shown you guys how I adapt things before. I've not had one fit this poorly, so I figured I would bring you along for the journey of how I'm going to make this dress one inch, one inch bigger after beautifully finishing it. I have plenty of seam allowance, that's not a worry here because I did use French seams, so we're just gonna go ahead and hop on to it. All right, so now we're doing a part of sewing that nobody enjoys. I am unpicking. I did such a beautiful job finishing this dress, and so when it didn't fit, that was kind of the most frustrating part. I think in the future, I'm gonna be a little bit more mindful about trying stuff on before doing the seam finishings because this meant I had to pull the seam three times instead of the usual once. I'm just ripping apart the waist seams that are near the side seams that I'm going to be expanding. So I really only am doing about two inches on each side here. And then after that, I do have to rip my French seam all the way up to the bust start. Uh, so again, this is where finishing your seams before doing any sort of mock-up or try-on can really bite you in the butt. I'm definitely paying for it here, but that's okay. We're getting through it. I feel like it's hard to tell what I'm doing here because my hands are pretty consistently in the way, but I'm just trying to cut this French seam to be really, really narrow because I didn't undo both parts and I'm hoping to just need to undo this first part and then sew much closer to the seam. So I need to just have everything clipped in so that way everything still is enclosed with no weird ends sticking out. And then once I have this done, I'm just drawing exactly how I want to follow my new French seams to give myself that extra bit of width. Um, and the reason I am drawing this with a pencil is so that way I make sure that it's consistent across both sides. And then I am just following those lines on my sewing machine, again, creating that outside encasement of the French seam. And then once this is done, I will go ahead and reattach the waist seam, but I won't finish it until I've tried it on. 
All right, I have tried this on. It is looking successful. We did it, hooray. So now I am putting back on some seam binding to make sure this looks really nice and finished despite the last minute extending I had to do. And then my last step is just to iron it open and get a new nice press on the seam. There's definitely just going to be some pressing you can see from the last go because I pressed it so well. But with that, we're done expanding the stress. All right, we're getting started on the beetle I'm going to be making. I have gathered all of my supplies from various craft stores and my personal stash of beads, everything in the boxes I already had, and then all the bags I picked up at my local creative reuse center to hopefully not have to buy any new materials for this project. So once I have everything collected, I have also drawn this beetle shell that I'm going to trace onto some black felt. I'm not going to give a super detailed tutorial for how I'm doing this because I just used the Closet Historian's tutorial on how she does her beetles. I will link that down below. I'm not going to repeat what she said because it was her work and you should go watch her video if you want to see how I did this. One of the things I didn't realize going into this is this is actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. I actually have quite a bit of embroidery experience. I started embroidering long before I ever started sewing. However, I never embroidered with beads and there is definitely a learning curve on beads and of course while opening my beads I spilled them everywhere which is classic so first following her tutorial I was beading the head I had a really hard time getting a density right of these sequins and beads and I'm not sure I ended up completely happy I again went ahead and followed her tutorial where she talked about putting in French knot. I decided to put some of this iridescent thread into my French knot, which this thread was not very fun to work with. It's essentially like tinsel, and so it didn't knot quite that well. However, I still am happy with how all of these French knots turned out. It just definitely like isn't perfect. And then here I am just satin stitching up and down the body of the beetle. So far, this is not where things went wrong. Everything here is going well. I'm happy with my border. I'm happy with the iridescent thread I chose to put in. But the satin stitch was very, very, very fun to do. And I don't know, I find stat satin stitches like really fulfilling is like not the right word, but they're very enjoyable. And then here I'm just adding more texture like she tells me to in the tutorial. And here is where things start to go wrong. So looking back, because of these big square beads are way thicker than all the other beads I was using, I should have put in some additional rows in between things. But first I'm starting out putting these big square beads down the center. The other thing is this beetle is lopsided. One side's bigger than the other. It is what it is. This was another part that I maybe should have taken the time to fix before going further. I am using a beading needle here, which now that I've started using beading needles, I will definitely be keeping these in my sewing thing. Uh, like the Closet Historian says, they are quite flexible. And I think there's a lot of projects where that flexibility would actually be really useful because of the way you can guide it through curves. But yeah, here I am just basically starting the process of stitching the beads on. And then after the middle one is put in, I am then going to fill out one side of the beetle and I'm just counting beads, keeping, make sure I can keep all the beads the same on the other side when I do that. So that way they are symmetrical. Again, sym symmetry doesn't really work when your beetle is just lopsided to start with. We're just, we're just beading along, getting that first half done. And then once that first half done, I'm just counting and doing that second half. Again, I just, I should have gone back and done additional rows of the seed beads and the bugle beads in between, but hindsight's 2020. And then here I am working on another part where I think things went wrong. I think I needed a lot stiffer wire than this. I thought it was stiff enough until I finished the piece and realized how the legs kind of wouldn't stay static. I think this thing could have been saved if I didn't dislike the legs as much. So yeah, there's, there's just gonna be some reworking that I need to do here. I just, I used what was in my stash and what was in my stash was unfortunately, I think way too flimsy because it's really designed like this wire that I'm using, I used back when I would make pendants where you'd be making your own hook and eye and wrap around and you just need a less sturdy wire for that than I think you need for like legs that stick out. But I was really trying not to buy too many other supplies and use what's in my stash. And then here again, I'm just following her tutorial of sewing this on. I'm then gonna back it off camera again. If you want to actually know how to do this and not rely on my vague instructions, check out her video. I will link it down below and I will put it in the eye right now. 
It's definitely a good tutorial. I don't think my lack of success had anything to do with the tutorial itself. I think I did this too fast and I was too impatient and I needed to take more time than I did on it. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the reveal. Despite my disappointment in the beetle, I can't wait to show you the dress. <laughs> You have seen this reveal. Before I hop into any part of the wrap up, I'm first gonna talk about my cost breakdown of how much this costs. So I have my trusty spreadsheet here. We're gonna go over it. The fabric for this was actually pretty cheap. I will say at this point for mood, if you can wait on the project, they do 20% off site wide, maybe not every month, but probably every six weeks. So lately I just keep an eye, see what I want to buy and I wait until it goes on sale. So this fabric was $50.36, which honestly feels pretty good because I absolutely adore this fabric. The notions for this project, I'm talking about just the dress. I did not include how much the notions for the bug cost here because there's such a weird mishmash like I don't have a good price range for it but the notions for the dress which was just the zipper and the seam tape I came to the calculation of five dollars for the notions and then for the pattern itself this pattern I was actually kind of surprised how cheap it was but now I remember it's because they like the long evening gown option isn't an option like that whoever owned it cut that part out so that's why it was on the cheaper side and it was only eighteen dollars and fourteen cents so that brings us to a supply total of $73.50. I adore this dress, so I am more than happy with that price for the dress because that's obviously what I paid. If you were to say buy this dress for me where I would be adding in labor, that's what we're gonna talk about next. Labor is just an important thing to add in. A lot of people forget that all clothing are made by hand and labor is ultimately a cost of the clothing. So the labor hours for this, this took me 16 hours. I did include the bug in there. The bug took five hours in case that helps. So 11 hours towards the dress, five hours towards the bug headpiece. We multiply that number, that 16 by 25, which is what the average pay of a seamstress in Seattle is according to the research I've done and that brings us to a grand total labor-wise of $400 so that brings us to a grand total of $473.50 to like buy a dress like this with the labor put in so let's real quick wrap this up I'm about to have people come and use lawn tools on the lawn so it might get noisy so bear with me so when I'm trying to start with the negatives and end positives so let's start about the negative this this is one big fat negative for me. Oh my God, somebody's car alarm's going off. Yeah, sorry, there's just gonna be a lot of background noise, but this is the time I have to film this. So this is when it's gonna happen. So anyway, this beetle, I think the wire is just too thin and it bends too easily. I think I needed to go and buy a thicker wire. So I'm going to for sure at bare minimum redo the legs of this guy. However, I also don't like, like I feel like the beads aren't like tight together enough and there's too much like black felt showing through. So I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't love it. I like like the pattern and stuff of it overall. I just think it needs a little bit of reworking. So I plan on reworking this little hair piece. I think in my worry about it being too flat, it got too 3D and I'm just like not sure I love the shape of it. So yeah, there's, there's just a few things that I think I need to work on with this guy. So this one just was kind of a big bummer on successes. 
I adore this dress. So I did wear it to work yesterday. It is a little bit fancy for my job, but I still got lots of compliments and stuff on it. I think it's gorgeous. I think this dress pattern might actually be one of my favorites I have ever used. I think the neckline is absolutely stunning. I do think I'm gonna put in like the bra strap holder things because they're, since this is like slightly off the shoulder, I think it would benefit from having the ability to like keep your bra straps in this. The pattern, I still probably, like when I remake this pattern, I'm gonna add about a half inch to the waist on each side. It's still a smidge tight. And I, like I said, I really like this pattern. I'm planning on making it in some cottons for a day dress. They're doing their leaf blowing, um, even though, you know, it's still hot out and not fall yet. I honestly am pretty proud of how successfully I let this out after it didn't fit. I think that's, again, just shows how much I grew and the fact that I was able to figure out how to do that even with French seams. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, there's not really anything I'm not happy about with this dress. I also really like this skirt style that has the gathers in the back that makes the back a little bit fuller, but is like nice and flat in the front. I just think this is always really pretty on me. And then the fabric does wrinkle quite a bit. I would expect nothing less of a rayon jacquard. And like I said, I think this is a tad fancy for work, but I'm excited to have it kind of in my fancy going out dress repertoire. Um, it is slightly sheer. I do have to wear a slip, but once I'm wearing a slip, you can't tell that it's sheer at all. Since this dress took heavy, heavy, heavy inspiration from the closet historian, be sure to check out her channel. I will have it linked down below. Otherwise, as usual, as you saw by my cost breakdown, this channel takes me a lot of time and money to run. So if you feel the desire, you can always buy me a coffee over on Kofi. This is also marks the last week of spooky sewing. So we are back to every other week sewing content on this channel. I do still put out a video every week. It's just I only do a project every other week and then the other videos are stuff like thrifting with me or hauls or whatever. I kind of feel like traveling, stuff like that. So if that all sounds really fun to you, definitely subscribe and stick around. I would love to have you. You can also comment down below or hit the thumbs up on this video. It always really helps me out with the algorithm. But with that, I will see you next time. Bye!